they all crave self-destruction. I said, well, is that true? This this Islamic regime, as zany and, 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 and erratic as it is, they did release our hostages after a long, prolonged negotiations. They didn't go to war. They ended the war with Saddam Hussein over Iraq. They negotiated reparations when we shot down a plane by the USS Vincent. And they've now and killed- accepted Israel, the U.S., and England launching covert strikes, including now it's coming out, aircraft covert bombings, uh, missile bases, you name it. They've even put up with that, and it's clear the West strategy is to poke them until they do something. Yeah, I mean, including assassinating their scientists. So they, they, they're, they're, they're like, you know, listen, North Korea engages in rational you know, behavior as well, even though it's got crazy leaders there. So deterrence works. So why are we going in there? And it's not to encourage proliferation. You know, I'm not happy Pakistan has a nuclear weapon. I'm not happy North Korea has a nuclear weapon. Um, I'm not happy they're nuclear weapons at all. But we have to deal with reality out there. Yeah. And deterrence is the way you prevent this from being used in a reckless way. There's only one country in the world that's ever actually used nuclear weapons. It's called the United States of America. Uh, and that's not to necessarily say it wasn't appropriate to bring the war in Japan to a close very quickly. But, you know, other countries haven't done uh, and acted in a reckless way. Sure. The but truth I, is, everybody knows the U.S., especially in the last hundred years, is ready and willing to go to war. And frankly, the world's totally scared of the United States. Uh, but the problem is we've had these corrupt interests take it over. And so now the American people are endangered like a third world country from their own uh, corrupt system using its military. In closing, in just four or five minutes, uh, uh, Mr. Fine, talking about the campaign, I mean, obviously, Ron Paul's winning by putting issues on the table, shaking things up, the mantra that he can't win, uh, that mind control uh, quacking is not working. Uh, So now they're pulling out every stop like they did with Rand, but that seemed to backfire. And some evidence shows that these latest attacks and, you know, cherry picking things out of tens of thousands of pages and, you know, diverse newsletters uh, is going to discredit uh, Congressman Paul, I've already seen his his numbers uptick in the last few days. It looks like it is backfiring. So what do you see this corrupt system doing uh, to try to stop him? And uh, how are you advising him? Uh, I mean, if it's a public strategy and everything Ron talks about is public uh, to deal with obviously a system that's going to pull out all the stops. I think that uh, other the other efforts that, uh, among others, you described here, uh, will be to try to take retaliation against um, broadcasters and people in the media, uh, even such as you, uh, who are supporting Ron Paul. Uh, that's what the, 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 the military-industrial complex frightened is crazy like this. Northrop Grumman, Boeing, the big banks. Well, they're fearful, so they want to take their advertising money and, oh, wait, wait, we can't have these people who are in the media uh, supporting Ron Paul. But the other thing that's that's I think will boomerang on those who are trying to attack Ron and or, or pretend that he doesn't exist is I think that that displays an arrogance that they are instructing the American people how to vote. And I think the American people resent that. Uh, they feel that they're entitled to make their own judgment based upon the facts, and they understand because of Ron's body language, if you will, that he's not an egomania. He's not a Napoleon, unlike uh, Newt Gingrich. He's there because he cares about the country, not about making two million dollar speeches. Uh, you know, if he doesn't win, or capitalizing on inside the Beltway lobbying contracts like the others. No, do. he's thrown himself and- into the middle of a bunch of scrofulous wolves who are attacking the old lion. Everybody can see it. They can tell he is a doctor trying to attend to the Republic, his patient. And uh, I agree with you that 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 it's only going to get crazier. And, and, and to see them in Iowa, to have the governor say a vote for him, just disregard it and it'll discredit our process. How dare Ron Paul discredit Iowa when he's the one trying to discredit Iowa's importance? I mean, it is so transparent. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Already thinking up excuses, you know, as to why Ron Paul's victory won't mean anything. You know, they're changing the the, the, the goalposts, if you will. But I'd like to uh, spend a, a few minutes before we close, Alex, on what I think is a total misrepresentation of, of Ron's detractors of his views on national defense. They're trying to suggest that he's code pink and he wants to be like uh, George McGovern or, you know, go humbly and, and, and lick the genuflect before all foreign emperors, which is absurd. Ron Paul 
Paul is the most hawkish of all the candidates when it comes to defending America and Americans. Now, of course, he's not hawkish about defending Afghans or Iraqis or Yemenis or Burmese or Tibetans, because that's not the role of the United States government. Maybe uh, Mother Teresa can do that. But he is the strongest on using all of our defense resources to defend us. A common defense is what the constitutional obligation of the president is. All of his rivals, really, they're weak on defending American Americans. They're strong on defending everybody else in the world by sending military. They won't now defend our own borders. And, and, uh, and, and Darwin, Australia will fight the Chinese, will fight everywhere except for Americans. And that is, in my judgment, insane. And your audience should think about this. If you had to talk to the family of the last soldier, Mr. Hickman, who died in Iraq, what would you tell that family what he died for? You would send him off to risk that last full measure of devotion. He's got courage. He's got manliness. And he doesn't know and no one can tell him why he died. To my mind, that is a moral crime, if not worse. No, he died for no bid contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fair. Yeah, right. And that is clearly a, a, an utterly scandalous reason to send somebody to die. We should not be sending people to fight and risk their lives for the country unless we can write a Gettysburg address and explain that's why they're out there to make sure that liberty remained the glory of the United States of America. And Ron Paul is out there saying, yes, of course we're going to defend America. That's what defense is about. But it is not anticipatory wars everywhere around the world, not to defend Americans, but to defend everybody else who has no allegiance to the United States, pays no taxes here, doesn't obey our laws, but hey, it gives some people a thrill of domination for the sake of domination, bestriding the world like a colossus. But you know, that's something for their egomania, and they ought to really leave the country if that's how they feel. Let's keep the United States a more perfect union and continue to celebrate and honor liberty just as the Founding Fathers intended and the Constitution instructs. AmericanFreedomAgenda.org, Bruce Fine. Well, I could talk to you for 10 hours. I know you've got to go. Just briefly, Congressman Paul also drew the ire of dozens of major publications on my show last week when I said Fast and Furious now caught shipping guns directly into Mexico. And it's also been in the El Paso Times, Chicago Tribune. Eight federal agencies involved shipping drugs back in. New York Times even admitted it and laundering the money. I mean, this, this is really all starting to come out. They can't hide stuff anymore in the information age. And Ron Paul said, yes, he should be fired, further investigated. It's clearly criminal. And they're like, how dare him say we should fire the attorney general? I mean, now, again, it's bad when someone's caught perjuring themselves, caught engaged in a, in, and CBS got the documents, Bruce, I know you know, yeah. where they were going to blame the Second Amendment. And, and Ron Paul said, yeah, it's a false flag. Mm -hmm. And so, and again, he's the bad guy. I guess if Ron Paul would have shipped the guns into Mexico, th I mean, Bruce, would that have been okay? <laughs> oh, well, I think that the United States government should never be involved in crime. You know, and, and we, it's, it's, it's interesting, Alex, that we find the same almost uh, government entrapment or involvement in many of these terrorism plots where they are the ones who are encouraging and coming to the table with the explosives and telling young Muslims, hey, don't you want to blow up the Sears Tower or the World Trade Center or something like that? You know, so they, they goes along for year after year. You know, why are we as a government encouraging, um, you know, criminal activity? You know, there ought to be one standard. You comply with the law, period. And I agree with you, Alex. It's just intolerable. If the attorney general didn't know, he should have known. And he should be fired for permitting people to do this without his knowledge. Exactly. You know, you're, so, you're responsible for your subordinates. He's the attorney general. I mean, remember all of the calls which I joined about uh, Alberto Gonzalez? He didn't know who was getting fired, why they were getting fired. Well, it, it seems to me it applies equally to Mr. Eric Holder. Well, you're right. Plus, he's been caught being involved in the whole thing. Amazing. Well, uh, what else can we do to help get Ron Paul elected? Just I stand by him and get the word out and realize this is uh, the fight of Ron Paul's life. Yes, and it, it, it's not the, just the fight of Ron Paul's life. What he recognizes, it's the fight for American freedom. And that's what's the greatness of his candidacy. It's not just, it really isn't about Ron Paul. And he'd continue to, to, to move on because he cares about the ideas. Those sure, but I mean, we born. drafted yeah, him. Yeah. He's the one, though, in the, I mean, he's really in the arena. So if we drafted him, he, we better get behind him. Oh, absolutely. There's no, re we need to stand unswervingly behind Ron Paul. And, you know, whatever intimidation comes, we reject it completely. Uh, you know, we act in a way that's civilized and, and decorous. 
Uh, we don't stoop to the other side's name calling. But no, we will not waver. We'll not be intimidated. You know, don't try to suggest that we're the revolutionaries. You know, you are the counter revolutionaries. You are what the French would call the 18th of Brumaire. You know, Napoleon taking over the French Revolution. And that's what these guys are trying to prevent Ron Paul's candidacy from succeeding because he's taking us back to the genuine, authentic constitution and understanding of the United States that I repeat. The glory of the United States is liberty, not domination. And we flip that. You know, now the glory of the United States and, and the, the, at least the ruling elite's mind is no uh, military industrial complex, yes. banks, $29 billion to so-called prop up all these mega institutions who are concerned solely with money, to have no philosophy, no soul whatsoever. You know, that is say is what exactly we fought against in 1776. That's what's so stunning to me. That's what we risked our last full measure of devotion to get rid of. Absolutely. If you're conscious and, and, and awake, it's so clear. Uh, Bruce Fine, have a great uh, holiday coming up and uh, be safe. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you, Alex. Well, that was Bruce Fine, author of American Empire Before the Fall, and the empire is out of control. It's run by finance oligarchs that are not free market, that make 40 to 1, 100 to 1 bets with other people's money like Corzine. I mean, we're in danger. And 99.9% .9 of us, the world's going to become a worse place with these globalists in charge. And Ron Paul is really just a mainline constitutionalist. And, and the fact that he's so radical to the system shows how far these tyrants have taken us. Amazing job, as usual, uh, to the entire crew, to John Baum with his piece on uh, the statistical chances of uh, dying from terrorism versus having a uh, soft drink machine fall on you. Uh, and, of course, uh, Darren McBreen, Rob Jacobson, Rob Dew, Marcos Morales, uh, Kevin, uh, everybody uh, here in the crew, and so many others, and all of you out there. If you're not a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv or InfoWarsNews.com, uh, it's almost nine years of material, all my films, the nightly news, the daily three-hour radio show, the higher-quality podcast, and you're the folks that literally fund our operation to be able to produce this type of information that nobody else is doing, and we're reaching millions and millions of people. We're having success. I want to thank you, but if you're a viewer out there uh, who's, who's watching this when we post it on YouTube and other places, well, think about those that actually subscribed to PrisonPlanet.tv uh, who did finance this. And think about coming over and joining PrisonPlanet.tv uh, and, and, and downloading the material yourself and putting it on disk and giving it to others so that we can continue to expand this operation. So those of you that do subscribe, again, are financing, getting this out to people generally where we post it the day after for free. But everything is right there at PrisonPlanet.tv. And it's still not too late, right up until Christmas morning, uh, to give the gift of truth and to give a monthly membership, or you can get a yearly and get 44% off right now at InfoWarsNews.com or PrisonPlanet.tv. Well, Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. on the radio, and then 7 o'clock Friday night here for the uh, edition of InfoWars Nightly News. And then next week we come back, and it's the final week of 2011, and uh, the year that we kicked off InfoWars Nightly News. The choice is up to you, liberty or tyranny. Choose a side. I'm Alex Jones signing off. God bless.